Have you ever wondered why some books or objects feel inherently Hindu? or inherently pagan, or inherently esoteric. The reason is because these objects and books and tools, they are charged with a spiritual frequency that matches the delusion that powers are trying to create in the spiritual realm. And by holding on to these things, we are creating a bridge between these supernatural realities, what the Bible calls heavenly places that are ruled by demonic principalities, and our life, our home, our soul. And so in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about the power of occult objects, why it's so important to get them out of your house, out of your life, and we're going to go through a list of things that you should either burn or just throw in the garbage. The reason why uh, an object, an idol, a book can feel inherently Hindu is because of the spiritual signature, the spiritual vortex, if you will, that it is tied to in the astral realm, in the spiritual realm. And so principalities that have been set over Hinduism, for example, the false gods of Hinduism, we don't just interact with the demon gods, we interact with the spiritual playing field that the demon gods have worked night and day trying to create. And this playing field gets attached and yoked onto our consciousness and becomes a part of the land that we see reality through. And occult objects and divination tools, they are the bridge between these false spiritual playing fields created by principalities and the natural world. It's how they infiltrate and advance their kingdom here. It's through these objects. And so just like everyone in the New Age believes, and just like every ancient culture ever believed, these objects aren't just pieces of decor. They contain intrinsic spiritual properties, and they are owned and overseen by demonic authorities. And so the question we should be asking ourselves is, what is a Shiva idol connected to in the spirit? What is a book like The Journey of Souls connected to in the spirit realm? What spiritual ties are there between this book and the spiritual powers that the Bible talks about in the book of Ephesians? The Bible says we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. And so these objects, what they're really meant to do is yoke your consciousness to a false spiritual delusion, energize you in this delusion. And because demons have legal ground, legal right to these objects in the spirit, what it does is it gives demons legal right to oppress you, to weigh on your spirit, your consciousness, your soul, an atmosphere in your house. And it can have just brutal effects on your spiritual health. For me, when I got saved, my house was still full of idols. And I couldn't figure out why some rooms in my house just felt so dark and scary. I didn't even want to go in there. It didn't feel like that until after I came to Christ. And then I would just look at a room in my house and I'd be like, I'm not going in there. It's because my room was full of idols and books, just like these ones. And I realized that these books are not just filled with false information but that they are giving spiritual powers right of way into my life and into my house. Because the truth is, you can still live under the influence of an occult spirit even after being born again. And one of the main ways you open yourself up to this is by keeping these demonically charged tools in your house. This may result in some of the following symptoms. An unsound mind, a double mind, a cloudy head, feeling of disorientation or vertigo, a heaviness or a haziness in certain rooms in your house, a spiritual urge or addictive pull to go back into the occult, a weakness in the Holy Spirit, like you feel like you don't have an open heaven over your head, you can't connect with God properly. It can also result in nightmares, spiritual attacks, straight up demonic manifestations in your house, and last but not least, poor spiritual discernment. It's hard to have our discernment fully possessed by the Holy Spirit if we are under oppression from occultic spirits. And right now we're going to go through a list of things that should be burnt. And I recommend burning them because that's what they did in the book of Acts. We'll take a look at that in a little bit. Right now we're going to go through a list of some objects that will give these principalities legal ground into your life and into your consciousness and into your house. So the first thing is books, occult books, New Age books, Gnostic books, esoteric books, transcendentalist books, Hindu books, Buddhist books, yoga books, any books that advocate reincarnation, crystals, aliens, universalism, pantheism, the use of drugs, spiritism, sorcery, magic, mysticism, channeling, quote-unquote, spiritual awakening. Uh, any false version of Jesus, Atlantis, Theosophy, etc. I would also recommend including fiction books in here that contain these themes in them. It says in Galatians 5.20 that idolatry and sorcery are works of the flesh and that those who practice these things will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. It further says in Revelation 21.8 that those who practice these things will have their place in the lake of fire. Or we could look in Deuteronomy 18 verse 12 where it says whoever does these things is an abomination to the Lord. So God does not want us involved in these practices. These practices are worthy of hellfire precisely because it is communion with demons, as it says elsewhere in scripture. And there are far better forms of entertainment out there that don't glorify the satanic kingdom. 
You're going to want to get rid of card decks, tarot cards, angel decks, ascended master decks, fairy and elf decks, fortune telling decks, magic card decks, anything like this. You're going to want to get rid of idols and statues, Buddha statues, Hindu idols, dragons, fairy, elves, pagan gods, Greek mythology statues. There's a reason why idol worship is equated with demon worship in Revelation 9.20 and Deuteronomy 32.17. And it's because of what these idols are representing in the spirit and what they're linked to in the spirit. It's not because God's a bigot, it's because he knows what's going on. The next thing you're going to want to get rid of is crystals. Crystal balls, crystal wands, crystal jewelry, crystal stones, anything that's been used for divination, spiritism, and witchcraft. I'll do a whole video on crystals another time, but there's a reason why they're in every single metaphysical shop. So just chuck them. You're going to want to get rid of clothing items with pagan symbols, anything with all-seeing eyes or the flower of life, anything with a witchcraft symbol on it or an esoteric symbol. You're going to want to get rid of CDs like meditation music, chanting, any music with occult, satanic, or esoteric themes. You're going to want to get rid of tapestries, jewelry, posters, movies and DVDs, trinkets, masks, dream catchers, incense, sage pendants, anything like this. These things all play a role in opening up your spirit to being yoked, to being spiritually oppressed and energized in a delusion about who you are, about who God is, and about how spirituality works. They create ties between your consciousness and the principalities that have been set over these practices and over these worldviews, which makes it harder for you to see the truth because it's like having an extra set of blinders over your eyes. There's a really interesting scripture in Acts 19, verse 19, where it reads, A number of those who had practiced magic arts brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all, and they counted the value of them and found it came to 50,000 pieces of silver. So this is about $10,000 worth of magic books, and they got rid of them permanently. They didn't donate them to other sorcerers. They didn't try to sell them and make a profit. We don't want to be recycling them back into the satanic kingdom to be used by other people to pervert other people's spirituality. We want to get rid of them permanently and just rid them off the face of the planet if we can by burning them. And you will have so much more peace and freedom and wholeness and clarity of mind when you rid your life from these objects. Thanks for watching. I hope this has been helpful to you in some way. And I'll see you guys in the next video.